Okay. We're good? Yeah. Okay. So I will hop right in and I will first get you to say and spell your first and last name and then your title with Centra. Okay. Thomas Angelo, uh, T-H-O-M-A-S-A-N-G-E-L-O, Vice President of Oncology Services at Centra. So can you talk a little bit about the announcement that Centra is making regarding its hematology and oncology clinic? I'll be happy to. So we um, have had a long-standing relationship with Lynchburg Hematology Oncology. Um, for about 10 years now. It's been a great relationship. Uh, last year we asked to renew that contract. So that contract uh, renews every three years. And so we were looking at actually doing a five-year mm. renewal this time. So we wanted to take this agreement out to 2029. And LHOC, the group, um, respectfully declined that offer and told us they wanted to go into private practice, and which we certainly respect. So how many new doctors will you be bringing in? We'll have a total of 12 new providers initially in April um, to make sure that we have continuity care for our patients. Where are the doctors coming from? Um, MD Anderson, um, some of them have been at the University of North Carolina, Stanford, Northwestern, University of Southern California, um, Emory, and a host of other names. And so, how many doctors, when LHOC was there, were there 12 doctors as well, or is this more or less the same number of doctors and care providers? So a year ago they had nine providers, and then two um, were retiring. That was a known retirement, so they were down to seven by the end of last year. So are any of the doctors from LHOC, are they staying, or is it all of them leaving with the company? So they're not employed by Centra. They're employed by Lynchburg Hematology Oncology. So when did Centra get word that Lynchburg Hematology and Oncology was not extending their contract? Uh, late November of last year. Okay, late November of last year? Yes. Okay, and so there was a lawsuit that Centra filed against LHOC in December of this year. Does this change have anything to do with that? They're separate issues for us, and so that, that was a compliance issue that we found through routine audits. Um, we've we're working on resolving that. We're working with LHOC closely to resolve that. So they, Centra actually had word that LHOC was not extending its contract before that lawsuit was filed. Repeat the question. So LHOC, I guess the dates, was it November of 2023 that LHOC told you guys that they were not extending their contract? That is correct. Okay, that's what I thought. Just making sure I got the date right. <laughs> so. When, when you got that word, what was the process like to find replacement providers? What did that process look like? So we hired five different companies to help us quickly um, recruit both locum and permanent providers to ensure that we had continuity care of April 1. So lots of great work by the team. About how many patients does the Cancer Center and Lynchburg Hematology Oncology Department see? We have about 58,000 visits across central footprint a year. Okay, and so this is across all of Central Virginia, not just locally, right? Uh, about 48,000 locally and about 10,000 more in the Farmville community. Wow, okay. So we have had some patients come to us with concerns and calls saying that they've developed relationships, close relationships with their doctors from LHOC that they've seen for years, and they are concerned about this switch in treatment. What's your message to them? What's your response to them? Well, first, we certainly wanted to extend this agreement. They are great doctors, the Lynchburg Hematology and Oncology doctors. Um, we have great providers coming. Some of the institutions I mentioned to you should let people know that they're going to have a smooth transition. What is that transition going to look like for the patients? What, um, I guess, in terms of their <laughs> process because obviously this is critical treatment for people with in really sad and scary situations some of them so what can they expect moving forward so that's a great question and so if they have an appointment already scheduled keep it if it needs to move at all we will certainly be reaching out to them um, notifications are going on our website and to patients um, already to let them know how this process works and so all that is happening now and then when will these changes be implemented? When will people start to see that new staff? When will all of this kick in? April 1st. Okay. I think that's, I guess I'll finish it off and say, what is your message, overall message, to the patients and to the community about this change? 
that they'll have continuity of care, that we care deeply for our patients.